the last week. St. Louis Rams wide receiver Stedman Bailey had a little celebration, so he dropped to the ground and pretended to go to sleep in the corner of the end zone using the football as a pillow. Although no flag was thrown, Stedman Bailey's using the ball as a prop drew the league's attention and has apparently resulted in a fine. Bailey took to Twitter to voice his displeasure and share that he was fined. Bailey tweeting this and later deleting, ah, hashtag NFL fines suck. I meant no harm by what I did. Shaking my head. Stephen A., should end zone celebrations be allowed? Yeah, it should. I don't think, I think anything excessive is harmful. And I think anything excessive shouldn't be allowed. But I don't believe that it should be as restrictive as it is. And I think that, you see, when I bring stuff like this up, I almost hate Skip to discuss subjects like this because when I go along cultural lines, then people get into race and all of that stuff and they find themselves incredibly unfor you know, uncomfortable with what I have to say. But I'm gonna speak truth. You know, the fact of the matter is, is that <clears throat> a lot of times we see guys and they're usually members of the minority community who's really, really celebrating. It's not to say that white folks don't celebrate and stuff like that. But by and large, most of the time you see folks celebrating and whatever, they're doing things and they're bringing attention to themselves. Well, part of the reason for that is because A, <clears throat> when it's time for the NFL to promote people, they usually hand pick and choose who's the person that they're going to put out front as one of the resident ambassadors for the sport. So when guys have an opportunity to market themselves where uh, folks on Madison Avenue can take notice who don't necessarily need the permission of the NFL in order to promote a particular athlete, that gives an athlete an opportunity to bring some shine and attention to themselves and ultimately capitalize off of it. So we understand that element. The other element, Skip, Molly, is this. <clears throat> It's amazing, whether it be on the collegiate level or beyond, how we pluck individuals from these community, deprived, desolate, impoverished, um, obviously devoid of acceptance, of love, affection, of recognition on a, in a lot of instances, and find themselves in a position where they get to just exhale and express themselves. And yet, when people feel it gets out of hand, you all of a sudden implement and incorporate rules and regulations that ultimately eradicate all of it, as opposed to simply saying to them, calm down. Um, there's no reason to pull a Sharpie out of your socks or whatever and write on a football. No, there's no reason for T.O. to run to the star of the Dallas Cowboys and, you know, and, and just celebrate himself knowing that that could incite violence from the Dallas Cowboys beyond actually playing on the football field. But if you're doing, you know, if you're imitating prime time, if you're celebrating in the end zone and doing a little quick dance or whatever the case may be, when you score a touchdown, what's the harm in that? I, for one, get disgusted when I see anybody celebrating before getting into the end zone because I see a guy celebrating a first down and then the very next play there's a fumble or an interception that occurs because that says to me you're celebrating prematurely because the job wasn't finished. But if it's a tight game and you get into the end zone, or you know and and you decide to celebrate as long as it's not excessive i don't see any problem with it and i do understand that it's open to interpretation as to what is excessive and what is not but you got guys that sit up there and they spike the ball and they do a little dance and in in one arena with martellus bennett celebrating when jay cutler threw him that touchdown pass there's no penalty and in another stadium a particular referee says no that's a penalty. I don't understand stuff like that. And I think that we, we can exercise common sense and understand when something is a celebration of what you accomplished as opposed to sticking it in somebody's face. I can understand us policing, antagonizing an opponent and bloviating in his face in a disrespectful fashion. That should always be penalized. But if you're celebrating something that you accomplished and your team accomplished and it's relatively quick and devoid of excessive behavior, I see no problem with it whatsoever. And the fact that 
that that is a problem to some doesn't speak to the celebration to me. It speaks to the level of institutional control leagues are hell bent on acquiring and maintaining. And I think that speaks to a bigger issue that nobody wants to talk about which is control, and that turns me off. Stephen A., real quick, before we get Skip's take on this, do you deem what Stedman Bailey did, taking the nap, sleeping on the job, as excessive? No, because okay. it was really quick. Okay. Because it was really quick, and he stayed there for, for more than a couple of seconds, maybe. Mm -hmm. But it was really quick, and he got right up. I don't see a problem with it. Perfect. That. Just wanted to be clear on that, Skip. <sighs> Let me address your original point, and I appreciate you bringing it up because it, it plays in our conversation here. I, I appreciate the, let's just say I'm sensitive to the potential racial undertones of a rule like this, the, the cultural, if you will, undertones of a rule like this. I, I get all that. But my question back to you is, is the NFL not as popular as ever? It, it is. It, it seems to gain popularity by the weekend, by the Sunday and the Monday night. And you can call me old school. It, th th this isn't about anything racial or cultural. It, it's about the NFL, the owners, protecting the most important product that they have, and that is the game itself. And look, I'll be the first to admit, did I, I was there the night T.O. signed the football with the Sharpie and took it to the box. It, it's entertaining, and this is, has to be entertainment. I get all that. I, I love what Chad Johnson, when he, I guess he was Chad Ochocinco at that point, mm -hmm. used to do with his river dancing and his using the pylon as a putter, putt the football. I, I get all that, and I, I, it made me chuckle. I, I appreciated it because it's inspired entertainment and Chad's a, a, a gifted entertainer to me. But Stephen A, you cannot throw open this Pandora's box because it would ultimately start to threaten the game because you say you, you're, you're forcing the referees to gauge, did that go on too long? And be subjective about it. Should we throw a flag on that one because he only slept on the football for like 24 seconds? Or did he go too far? What, what happens is, when, when you throw this open and you have no rules against celebrating, then what happens is you, you, you risk that players start to upstage the game of football with over-the-top, um, can you top this, choreographed, rehearsed skits. That's what Chad was getting to. He was trying to top himself. How do I outdo myself? And he said he would stand in front of the mirror and practice the skit. Well, well, how do you regulate that? How, how do you stop that if it goes too far? Well, well, if you open Pandora's box, you can't say, well, he can do his for 22 seconds, but he can't do his for 31 seconds. I don't know how you stop it, so they say, well, you can go back to your bench area and celebrate if you want to. I, I don't know, I've even thought about, could you allow teams two end zone celebrations per game, three per game. I don't know, you, you, you just can't regulate it, Stephen A, and the game is great without it. It's entertaining enough without it. Would it add a little icing to the, the greatest cake in the world? I yeah. guess you could say that it would, but, but it's, it's no shot at, at the players who are more, more prone well, to celebrate than other players. Well, Skip, I think that you're missing my point. In no way am I saying that the rule itself, these rules, itself was implemented and directed, you know, towards minorities playing in the game. That's not what I'm saying. Okay. What I'm saying is that uh, indiscriminately, you know, it has an effect on a particular culture of individuals because they're the ones primarily doing it. You know, when Rob Gronkowski celebrates, I have yet to see him get penalized. Now, I don't know if that's the truth or not, and whether or not it's happened. I'm saying that I haven't seen it. But it's just one not, big spike, I, right? I'm saying, yeah, yeah, well, you know what? He, no, when, when he, when, you know, but listen, he's done a few things other than just spike. Let's be clear about it. I have no problem with it. I have no problem with it. But we also have to also recognize this. I'm tired of hearing the argument that the NFL is number one, that it's more popular than anything is an excuse. We want to protect it. Well, Skip, what helped make the game popular? First of all, I don't think it would be as popular if there were 82 games a year, okay? It's the fact that it's 16. It's the fact that it's, it's, it's um, 17 weeks in the season. It's the fact that it's every Sunday. It's, a, it's an event. 
you know, every week rather, whether it's Thursday, Sunday, or Monday, it's an event. And so because of it, that contributes to it. But I remember Billy White Shoes Johnson. I remember primetime Deion Sanders. I didn't think that they hurt the game. I thought they helped elevate the popularity mm -hmm. of the game. And even in this day and age, I don't think the calls against celebrations are consistent. I just highlighted how Martellus Bennett wasn't penalized, but a couple of other guys, I don't recall which ones, but I remember watching them this weekend, they were penalized. I'm simply pointing out there's no consistency. There's no rhyme or reason to it. It seems to be at, you know, at, at, at you know, at the, you know, discretion of the official, or, you know, depending on which stadium you're in on a particular Sunday, Monday or Thursday. And I'm saying that that it's a problem for me. I think we all understand nobody's asking, nobody's condoning excessive behavior. But I think the fact that they're so stringent with some of these rules, every time we turn around, it's a new rule. And that's why you have players primarily of, 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 of minority descent that come at it and say, you've heard guys, and I think this is utterly ridiculous, please don't get me wrong, but you hear guys alluding to slavery and all of this other mm -hmm. stuff. And of course that's excessive because we certainly can't accuse them of experiencing that. It's an insult, you know, to folks who actually did experience slavery to be saying such nonsense like that. The flip side to it, however, is that it does highlight and illuminate how disgusted they are by the proverbial straps they feel yep. are, are, are suffocating them because every little thing is dissected and there are rules consistently implemented to restrict their expression and everybody ain't the same and we don't seem to embrace that at our discretion and it usually works against them and not for them. And I understand and empathize with that argument because I do think that sometimes it's applicable. So the league just needs to calm down. We know what excessive is. Penalize that. But outside of that, pump the brakes and mm -hmm. relax and stop acting like you're inhuman. You know what's excessive and what's not. If it's not excessive, calm down. That's all I'm saying. Fair enough. we got to go to break here now, and we're going to move on and talk about the Dallas Cowboys. Are they done? Well, our former Cowboy, Darren Woodson, is in the house, and we're going to get into that subject with him coming up next.